Hi everybody, David here with VR Render. In this uh, slightly shorter video, I want to take a look at the use of HDRIs or high dynamic range image lighting within D5 and why I think you should probably use it. For this scene, just for demonstration purposes, we're going to look at just automotive rendering within D5. And so what we have is a pretty simple blender scene that you can see right here. I've got a Mustang and then I've just got a low wall that I've put in. In D5, this looks like this by default. Um, so you can see it's relatively standard, just urban scene. I built, you know, I have some buildings. I've got a road, uh, some people who are preferably facing away from the camera, which is something we talked about in another video. And we've got like just a kind of a waterfront area out here, just using a flat plane with a water material applied. And we're using one of the newer backdrops that came into D5 in version 2.4. That's the urban sort of city environment. All right, go ahead and click on scene one. Um, so I, what I'm going to do is run through this, how you would like this using just the geo and sky. And then we'll take a look at HDRIs and just look at some pointers, things that you want to be mindful of if you're going to use a HDRI to light your scene in D5. Now, historically, I generally preferred the look of the geo and sky, especially for interior shots. I have changed my mind on that and I did a video on the best way to light your scene and to get the best results in D5. And really the HDRI with artificial lights turned out to be the best way to do it. So I'm gonna go through the steps here of how I would light this for a sort of dramatic uh, automotive render, which I know is not what D5 was intended for. You generally use something like Keyshot, um, which is more specifically for product rendering. But I think this will be a good example. All right, I've got scene one, which is our default lighting. That's just the normal geo and sky. Let's click on really the settings as best that I can make them using the geo. All right, so I am also going to turn on real time here. So just make sure that that is on. All right, so if we wanna look at this, a couple of settings. I am using the geo and sky. I've got the sky set to a pretty low horizon level to kind of force light in on a dramatic, like sort of left to right approach. I've tweaked the north offset a little bit and I have gone ahead and increased the sunlight intensity for this scene as well. You wanna get that light and I've dropped the sun disc radius. This will determine the softness of the shadows, but because we're going for something quite dramatic, I'm gonna put that down a little bit and we'll put it around here. And I think that will work just fine. Generally with these sort of product shots for automotive, you, you do want um, really, really harsh, like highlights on the vehicle um, that sort of sells it as metallic and, you know, kind of clear coat and carbon fiber. So you want a lot of these really strong highlights. I've also added a number of lights to our scene. These are all rectangle lights. They're all set to a really high intensity and they're all quite large. So I've got about four around the car and you can see that's kind of where we're getting some of these really bright highlights where the, the you know, you're, you're seeing that sort of light reflecting off the metallic vehicle. I think that works pretty good. In terms of environment setups, I'm gonna move this um, webcam to the left here. We're gonna turn on clouds and I'm gonna make sure the cloud amount is somewhere around here. And I am going to turn on cast shadows. So this will kind of add to the, both the render time and the, and the sort of GPU requirements. But if you see here, when the option is turned on, the clouds cast shadows and affect the light from the sun. This is sort of a more realistic approach because clouds do, um, they do cast shadows and they do diffuse light. So it's better to turn that on. I'm also gonna turn on fog. And I'm gonna crank this a little bit to there because you know, automotive kind of rendering and urban rendering in general, you you just kind of put fog on. It just looks cooler, quite simply. I'm not gonna turn on volume light, uh, sort of mixed results with this thing. So we're just gonna leave that off, but we are gonna add fog because again, urban renders, you, you always add a little bit of fog. I'm gonna hit update to update my scene here so that all of these changes will transfer over. And all in all, that's looking good. Uh, one caveat and one warning, 
I did try this with precipitation on to give it that really cool, you know, it's just rained in an urban environment and your vehicle is just, you know, badly parked on the street and it looks really cool. But you kind of get run into some weird problems where the bound, like the water will actually hit the surface of the vehicle and it doesn't look right. It should look even more specular and it doesn't. It actually looks very weird. So if we turn that on, you can actually see rain is falling and I actually have a, I, I tried putting a plane up here to, to block it and it just doesn't really work very well when you grab the puddle slider. Like that is not how rain is going to really fall on a vehicle who's got, you know, glossy varnish on top of it, although otherwise known as the clear coat. And so we're going to leave that off. It would be cool to do that. And, and it's possible you could do that if you render two images, one with rain, one without, and use a mask to paint it out. But whatever. All right. Uh, I'm going to increase the fog just a little dash more. And I think that all looks nice. And I'm going to make the starting distance. I want to make that kind of be off in the distance a little bit. All right. Update those changes. In terms of the effect, uh, I'm going to turn off this LUT. We'll talk about that in a, in a second. In terms of post-processing, you do always want to turn off the auto exposure. By my understanding, auto exposure overrides a lot of the other lighting settings. It takes priority and it will distort how the image actually looks. So turn it off and then manually adjust the exposure yourself. And we're going for kind of a dramatic shot here. So I'm going to take that a little bit into the negatives and I think update that as well. The highlights, yeah, let's go ahead and crank it. It's probably a little hard for you guys to see on the screen there. It's really just going to lighten up the lighter areas of your image. So if you think of it as slope is the midtones, the shadows are going to be exactly that. And then the highlight will be the brighter areas of your shot. And so we're going to really just shove that up. We can adjust the shadows as well. We can take this down to be a little bit more dramatic. 64 is good. Click update. And I'm going to leave the midtones alone. Now, I am noticing that this area over here is probably a little too bright for my liking. It, what you could really do is try and hide that, but whatever. Now, add a little bit of bloom. You can see the effect that the bloom is going to have. You want your, your product shot to look as cool as possible. So we're going to add a little bit of bloom. Lens flare, a very, very small amount of this. A uh, little goes a very, very long way. It might be even easier just to paint this on in Photoshop using a lens flare brush. You can you can find those like online. And I'm going to add that vignette around the edges, that darkening. And you can see that does a nice job. A little bit more. Chromatic aberration will distort. Chromatic aberration is, is put in there to recreate the imperfections that would have appeared on photography that was done on actual film. Now, most people would use Photoshop to take chromatic aberration out. We want to put it back in because it tends to make your renders look a little bit more realistic. Um, saturation, I'm just going to leave alone. We'll actually adjust this with our LUT. So um, again, just click update right there to update the scene. And lastly, we are going to use a LUT or lookup table. So if you're not aware, these are sort of um, visual shortcuts. You can use them in Photoshop, Lightroom, Camera Raw, uh, really just as presets. And you can see you can use the standard ones that come with D5. There's about, I think, five of them. And these are pretty cool. They're a little strong. Like the modern dystopian is, is pretty cool if you wanted to do kind of a... Uh, well, a modern dystopian look. But you can kind of see that they do override a lot of the other color values in the image. And so they're a little bit strong, but you can find a lot of these online. You can download lookup table packs for free. You can probably better off getting better ones if you purchase them. So I'm gonna use one that I picked up a while ago and I'm gonna use custom and I'm looking for fall in a different way. And you can kind of see if I turn this off and turn it on, the effect that it has. So you want to find a sweet spot where you're kind of adjusting the colors a little bit. And I think that's good. I'm going to hit update again and make it a little stronger. Okay, we've got our environment set up. We've got our effects set up. Um, can't really think if there's anything else that I want to adjust here. We're going to leave color grading alone. I've, I've not really used this in D5. I'd rather do that in Photoshop. And then everything else is, you know, about as good as I think I can actually make this. 
in terms of making the shot just look cool within D5. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and we'll render this out. And then we're gonna look at the HDRI settings and just see which one looks cooler. All right, I'll see you in a moment. Let me go pause this and render it out. Okay, everybody. So with that render done, which took about six minutes for my slightly, you know, stock 3070 uh, to finish up. And that was set to a 6K render size. Let's take a look at the HDRIs. Now, the first thing to note is uh, what a HDRI is. If you're not aware, HDRI is a high dynamic range image, which is a very fancy way of saying and I'm going to do a very layman's version of this, you have more visual information, more data in the images than a sort of standard dynamic range. In other words, the range of color values is higher. So sort of, you know, darker darks and brighter brights. Um, and so that's a very, very simplistic way of explaining what it is. Suffice it to say, they have been used in 3D rendering for quite a while now. Um, they were being used when I first started doing anything 3D, when that's 14, 15 years ago now. And so they've been around, I think, for quite a while. They were generally you know, used initially in 3D rendering programs like 3D Studio Max to light up your scene. And then programs like Keyshot came along, which made HCRI rendering kind of the de facto high standard for rendering, particularly for product shots. Now, one thing to note about HDRIs when it comes to D5 is the formatting. And so you'll notice most of these HDRIs that you can see on this website are really longer than they are high. And that is the same way that D5 requires you to use HDRIs. You can, you can get like spherical HDRIs and things like that, but the format that D5 wants is basically length and height like this. And you'll notice we're on a website, this is Polyhaven, might be familiar to quite a number of you at this point. Polyhaven has been around for a few years. It's an amalgam of three separate websites that have come together to form one uh, Patreon and sort of publicly supported website for HDRIs, textures, and really, really great models. If you're a Blender user, you can purchase a direct link for all of the Polyhaven content directly within Blender for about $30, which is really, really, really cool. Now, um, you can also donate to support them as well. You'll see on the left, we've got a lot of different options. And because we're going for an urban render, I am gonna go to the urban render tab. So like, it would be really weird if you were to try and do like this cool automotive shot and yet the environment that you're using is for example, going to be a nature shot and you've got all these kind of greens. You, quite simply, this color information is going to be what's going to be used to light your scene. So it'd be really weird to have like all this green in an urban shot. It just wouldn't sort of make a lot of sense. Now, I, this brings me to my second point. Um, the first there being context matters. So, you know, be thoughtful about the environment that you're going to use. Don't just pick one because you think, oh, that looks cool. It might, but not in the setting that you're using it in. So just be mindful of that. The second thing, and for this, I'm going to go over to D5. Here we are in our scene. I'm going to click on the HDRI scene here. And this one it shouldn't really have any settings set. Everything should be bespoke now. All the clouds are off. This is just a normal scene with the lights that we had in. Let me go to the HDRI tab. And you can see, uh, when you go to the HDRI tab, you can click on this and you can either open up the default ones that come with D5 and they've got some really nice ones. I'm gonna turn off that bloom. It's a little bit obnoxious. Let's turn that off. There we go. And turn off the lens flare and the vignette. All right, and I'm gonna put the exposure back to auto, just standard for this. So here we are with a partly cloudy, midday, clear sky, and you can change these and you will see the results pretty, pretty immediately. So for example, the evening glow that we have here, this will really show up, uh, you know, it's, it, it's pretty purple. It's, it'll work in certain settings. And you will notice when we go back up here to the HDRI, I'm gonna use a one that I've brought in. This is custom. And I'm gonna click on this uh, Furisberg Mountain and let's load that in. 
right, let's put the light back to just 0 0.5. And I just want to make sure all these settings are effectively. Let's, what I'll do is I'll go to scene one here and just load it up from there. So scene one, custom, there we go. All right, this looks pretty nice just as is. I, I think it, it'll work kind of all right. There is, however, one problem with this. This HDRI, you can see below the sky, we're seeing this ground area. This is content that was in the actual photograph when the HDRIs are usually composite of like, uh, usually about, I think about three different photos smushed together. So this is the actual environment that the photographers got. Now you may not be thinking, why does that matter? Well, if we look over here, I'm gonna zoom out of my scene a little bit. You can see, here we go, that. That is the actual environment that we saw just here. That is that right there. Um, D5 will project the HDRI on a sphere and wrap that around your entire scene. But because we've got content here that comes above kind of the horizon line, or at least the D5 horizon line, you're seeing it in your shot. So behind these cool buildings over here, you've got this huge monolithic thing, which is just in the, which is that right there in the photo. And so you can see it's popping up. Now, you may be wondering why doesn't D5 just come up with a thing that allows you to adjust this? And I saw one of the developers had mentioned on the forums, it's actually much harder than you think to do that. You can rotate the HRIs, you can like go in here and spin this and you could try and hide you know, the, well, the bits that you don't want to be seen, but that doesn't necessarily equate to the good lighting that you actually want. Maybe you need the HRI at a certain angle, but you're seeing something in the environment. So my advice, going back to Polyhaven, if you can look for HDRIs that are like this, where it's in many ways, it's, it's almost just sky, that's what I've had the most success using. You don't have to worry then, you might, it might look a little bit off, but for the most part, it's easier to have this fit in than for example, something like this, where that's just gonna be really, really hard to hide. Even if you're doing an outside, you know, commercial render of a house or a building or something like that, you know, there's still a chance you'll just have this like weird landscape that will appear in your shot. So when in doubt, try and avoid it. All right. I'm gonna go back to my HRI and I'm gonna use this one that I picked up from Polyhaven. Again, those guys are awesome, great job. And I'm gonna load this, make sure this is loaded up. And now you can see when I spin around, the it's a little bright because of the bloom, but if we zoom like way, way, way out here, what you're kind of getting is, if I roll that down, the ambient light, that is just this Pure Sky HDRI. All right. I'm gonna go back to our car really quickly. And I'm, to do that, I am gonna ramp up the speed of the camera. So this might be a little fast. There we go. And let's just go back to our shot. All right, and you can see there's my lights that I added to the scene. Now, a couple of other things about the HDRIs. The strength of them is going to be governed by this right here. Think of that as like a force multiplier. And you do wanna preferably use this over the exposure tab instead. Tr you know, turn off the auto exposure, but don't use the auto exposure, I think, to light your scene. Strengthen the light in the HDRI. The other thing about this, and I, I, I know that some of you will probably encounter this, we downloaded from Polyhaven. You can click on, you know, one, two, four, eight, 16, 20, wow, 24K is pretty impressive. HDRIs, you do wanna download the HDRI, not the EXOR um, or dot EXOR. Make sure it is set to just the HDR, HDR. Sometimes these will, I think you can also download JPEGs, but you don't wanna use that. You do want the HDRI. Now, you will notice when you do that, even if it's really detailed, even if, for example, you, you downloaded this and you're like, wow, all that cool detail. When you go into D5, it will not look like that. Um, this is a reoccurring issue that people are asking about on like the Facebook groups and the forum. D5 does not display your HDRI at the highest resolution. It actually downscales them to about 2K, which means they'll actually look 
kind of rubbish in the viewport, but they will render at the correct resolution. So really don't, don't sort of, you know, wig out if it doesn't look quite right. It, if you think about it, even Photoshop will kind of struggle if you bring in, you know, 8K images and you've got multiples of them or, you know, 16K image and you've just got one of those. So it makes a lot of logical sense to downsize this to 2K and that will speed up things quite a bit. Hi everybody, as we get to the end, I just wanted to show this with you. This is the final renders from both. So on the left, we have the original Geo and Sky. And there's a couple of features of this that I just wanna point out. The first is obviously the kind of harsh shadows. Now that was because we put the sun to a low radius. Um, you know, all in all, it looks good. I will point out, you know, this model that we're using here and my material setup on the model is probably not ideal. I don't do, you know, car renders. Um, so that's kind of a bit of an issue. It looks okay. Like, I think I'm, I'm you know, I think it's fine. It would be passable with a bit of Photoshop work. It's not going to replace Keyshot anytime soon, but, you know, by and large, um, it, it'll work. You are getting some pretty strong extremes of light and dark. And this area right here is just too, maybe too lit up is the best way to put it. But you're getting some nice shadows on the trees. Now, if we look at the HDRI image, now nothing was different here. I, I was able to copy the exact camera and the settings, interestingly enough. Um, I might do a video on that at some point. And you can kind of see they're, they're very, very similar in terms of some features, but the overall lighting on this is I think just better. This is extremely blue in the buildings and yeah, it is sharp on the car. The reflections and things like that on the car are pretty sharp, but overall, yeah, I, I think I know which one of these I prefer. It's um, it's kind of curious, you can see the difference on these trees here, where it's shadowed and where it's not. Now this does also feature the secondary sun, the additional sun, but overall, I think this is just, if we zoom in just a little bit and look at the car, and again, I don't have the car material set up correctly or anything like that. Um, and the mod, you're, you do run into, when you do automotive stuff, you're, like your models need to be really, really, really good. And this one's kind of okay, um, but it was there. It was free. So you can kind of see, um, you definitely get a lot more of the sort of fidelity, I think, with the HDRI. Now, I don't love how blue this section is, but I think that is actually due to the HDRI that I picked, which going forward, I probably, I would suggest maybe try like a bunch of really low res HDRIs, render them at 2K, see if there's any weird hot spots like this where it's like super blue and find something else. I think I should have found something a little bit more like a natural sky. But that being said, I still think, you know, yeah, this is just the better image all in all. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there for today. Thank you so much for watching and um, hopefully we'll have some more content out um, pretty soon. All right, cheers.